Hello, so today we're going to be extracting from PDFs using Power Automate and regular expressions. And I am going to give you a little demo of what that looks like first, and then we're going to talk a little bit about it, and then we're going to jump into this step-by-step -step tutorial. So I have PDFs here in a folder, and they look like this. This is public data, so I got these off the web. And what we're going to be getting today is we're going to be extracting this institution name, the RSSD ID here, and we're going to pull something from one of the tables down here. So I think I used like the interest income in like this box. And I chose these because they're kind of a mix of the easy to get things and a little bit more difficult to get things that are embedded in a table. So let me show you what the flow looks like. I'm going to start this and I'll probably pop up on my other monitor. I'll have to move it, but so I'm going to run my flow. And it is loading all of those into Excel from the PDFs. This is, um, by the way, Power Automate Desktop, which is not the same as Power Automate Cloud. So what Power Automate Desktop does is it controls things on your computer. So you can tell it to go to websites, click things, move the mouse, push keys on the keyboard, and extract text from files on your computer. This is a tool that's really good for process automation. When you're doing things in Excel, it's got a whole bunch of Excel actions. It can run scripts and it can actually send data to SQL Server without a premium connector, which is a differentiator from Power Automated Cloud. And this thing is free with the most recent version of Windows as of this year. So that's pretty cool. Um, essentially, if you're willing to be a person who pushes the start button, you don't have to get into all of the licensing pieces. So we're going to keep it simple today and just use the free version. And I'm going to create a new flow, give it a name. So the first thing I like to do before I get started is to just make my Excel file template that I'm going to be storing the data in, just set up the columns the way I want them, that kind of thing. So in my case, it's a very basic Excel file. So you just got file name, institution name, the ID and the income as column headers, and then blank cells. And I want to point out that you don't want to insert a table around this yet, because what we're going to be using in our flow is an action that gets the first free row in Excel. And if you have a table inserted, it thinks that that row is not empty and it'll insert everything below your table. So you can make a table as part of your flow. You can have your flow insert a table around your data at the end, but wait to put that in until later. Okay. And what I like to do with these Excel files is create a template file that the flow uses and then does a save as on it. So that way, when I'm working on this, I don't have to go back and erase the data every time when I'm testing things, if you know what I mean. So back to our flow here, the first thing we need to do is get our PDF files that we want to be extracting from. So that is under this folder section. So you can tell it to get files in folder and then give it a path. So mine is in my documents folder, which is under the C users, my name, documents, this one here. And if you want to, you can give it a filter so you can, um, it takes wildcards. So you can do asterisk dot PDF, and then it'll only pull PDFs and then toggle whether or not you want it to include subfolders. And by the way, you can do this text extraction from PDF with PDFs that are hosted somewhere in the cloud, like on a website, you just have to set it up very differently. So the, the way I've done web PDFs in the past is to have the flow go in and open the PDF file and then copy the text using keyboard shortcuts. And then it can parse the text in the clipboard, if that makes sense. But since we have these files on our computer, it's a lot easier for us to access them. So the next action we need to do is we need it to open our Excel file so that it can put data in it, right? So if you search for Excel in here, there's a ton of Excel actions. So we're going to use this launch Excel, and then we're going to change this from blank document to open the following document and give it our template file that we have saved somewhere. And then click on save. And what this does is it stores that Excel instance into a variable, and then it can refer to that when you're using your actions. So like I said, I like to do a save as on that template file. So I'm just going to add a save Excel action real quick and have it do a save as. So you can change this from save document to save as, and then give it the path in the file name and save that. And then we are going to loop over all of those files in that folder and perform actions on them. So we need a loop in here. So those are under the loops category. So we're going to use a for each loop. 
and the value to iterate here is going to be the output from our get files in folder step. So if you click on this X here, it'll let you select that variable. So that's files, list of files. And then we can save that. And now we need to get our text from the PDFs. So there's a whole category of PDF actions here. I'm gonna do this extract text from PDF and drop that inside the loop. And for the file, this is gonna be really easy because we're looping over those files, right? So we can just from our variable, go and select the current item. So that's the current item that we are on in our for each loop. And then it's going to take that text and put that text into a variable here. So next we need to parse that text. So we need to look for the specific things we're trying to extract because this extract text from PDF is going to get all of the text in the PDF. And then what I like to do here is save and run this so that we can see the extracted text because that's gonna be how we decide what text it should be looking for to extract what we want. So since we've got a for each loop here, I'm going to click on this white space next to the word end and see how it added that red dot. That red dot is a break. So it's going to stop that action in the for each loop so that it doesn't keep going because I just want to see one of them, right? I don't want it to loop through everything right now. So I'm going to run this and make sure that you've got your Excel files closed because if they're still open, it's going to error out when it tries to open the Excel file that's already open. Just keep that in mind. And the flow variables over here, if you expand this out, you can see where our extracted text is. The ellipses menu next to it, if I click on that and then click on view, it gives me the text that was parsed. And we can expand this so that you can actually read it. So you can see the institution name is right after the words institution name. So what we can do is make an expression that looks for these words and gets whatever is after that in the same line. So I'm going to close this and we need to stop our flow so this it stopped at this break here but we need to click on stop in order to start editing this again it won't let you edit it one when it's running so i'm going to search for the word parse in here to get parse text as an action so we're going to parse the text that we extracted and for the text to parse i'm going to give it our variable of the text that came out of the pdf and for the text to find, we have this option of is regular expression, and we can turn that on. So what this does is it lets us write an expression for the text to be looking for. And I'm going to give you the ones that I use that are super common. So typically you're looking for a particular word and whatever text comes after that word. And what we can do with that is we can refine it once we get it to split off the parts that we don't want. So for our text to find, we're going to look for the words institution name. And a regular expression is going to be a parentheses, period, plus sign, close parentheses. So what this is going to do is it's going to look for this text. It's going to store that and whatever comes after it on the line. And if you need to get text that is on the next line down from text, which sometimes will happen in PDFs, what you want to do instead is add backslash r backslash n, and that is the code for a new line character. But ours is on the same line, so I'm going to leave that there. And what you can do too, if you have something a little more complicated that you're trying to pull, is you can use ChatGPT to give you a regular expression. It's very good at making regular expressions. The only thing is you have to explicitly tell it not to use look behinds because it'll want to do that. And then for the variables produced, it's going to want to create a variable for the position of that text. We don't need that, so I've turned it off here. And then match is going to be whatever text matches your regular expression. I'm going to rename this to something specific so that when we refer to it later, we know what it is. So I'm going to call it institution name. And then we need to split this text. So this is going to include the words institution name in the return value. And we don't want that when we're sending it to Excel. So we need to split that off. So I'm going to use a split text. The look behinds is how the regular expression removes the included text. And as far as I can tell, Power Automate doesn't support look behinds. So um, that's why we have to split it out. So we're going to split text and we're going to use the variable that we just created here. So our institution name text and we're going to split on custom, not standard. And then for our custom delimiter, we're just going to put in the text that we're trying to remove. So that's institution 
name and then I'm going to leave the space after it because I don't want the space saved either. And this one is not a regular expression so don't toggle that on. And then for the variables produced I'm just going to reuse the same variable. So I'm just going to replace the value that was in the variable with this new value. And then click on save. So now if we run this make sure to close your excel file from before because I keep forgetting to do that. And what that got is our institution name here in an array. So you can see that the first position is blank because it split that text out. That's why it's blank. And we're going to use that array and refer to that second position to get just the institution name for our Excel file. So we're going to stop this and to get this into Excel, the first thing we need to do is we need to tell Power Automate where we want to put this information in Excel. So what we use for that is first free row. So this there's two actions for this. First free column or row or just the first free row on a specific column. So I'm going to use this one because it's a little bit easier to set up and that's all we need. And the Excel instance, it'll automatically grab. And the column we want to use is column B. So I've got the file name column B. And actually, we could have used any of the columns that we were putting data in here. B will work fine. And it saves that to a variable. So we're going to use that to refer to when we're adding the data to Excel. So we've told Power Automate where our first free row is for it to put the information. Now we need to tell it to put the data there. So we're going to tell it to Excel Actions, Write to Excel Worksheet. So the value to write, if you recall from my template, the first column there was for the file name. So I'm going to do that first. So the file name, if you recall, is the thing that we're looping over. So it's the current item. And for the column, that was column A that we were writing the path to. And the row is going to be that first free row variable that we just created in the step above. So that one. And we're going to do the same thing for our institution name. So the value to write, if we select our institution name variable here, this has the split values in an array. So it's got two positions. So what we need to do is tell it which position to look in. So just put your cursor right before the percentage sign and do a square bracket and then give it the position number we're looking for, which is the second position. But because this is computer speak, um, the second position is actually number one and the first position is number zero. So we want to tell it number one and then close the bracket. So this is the second position in the array. And then for the column, this was column B. And for the row, we're going to give it that first free row again. All right, so let's test this out. It has a tendency to open Excel behind this window. If that bothers you, you can tell it to focus window and bring it to the front. So we've got our file path here and our institution name. So that's good. We still need these two here. So let's do those next. Um, the ones in the table are just a tiny bit trickier because we have to be very specific about what we're looking for. So if I look at the PDF, the interest income was right here, which looks like it's close to this text. But I just want to double check our parse text and make sure. So I'm going to copy this particular value that we're looking for. So I'm going to go to the extracted PDF text. And actually, I'm going to. So it's next to impossible to find things in here. So I'm going to put this in a text file so that I can use a search on that particular value. So I'm going to paste this in here and then I'm going to look for that value with a control S. So here it is. So you can see this one has some extra bits after it on the line. So what we want to do here is change our regular expression a little bit. So let me show you how to do that back in here. I'm going to add another parse text step. So we're going to get another value. And then for our text, we're going to select our variable again, the extracted PDF text and text to find. Um, the regular expression we're going to use here is a little bit more complicated. We're going to look for this particular text value that was next to the number that we're looking for. And then we have a parentheses, square bracket, backslash, D, comma, square bracket, plus sign, close parentheses. So what this is going to do is it's going to look for a number and include commas. 
after that text. And the thing with the commas is that commas are technically text. They're not numbers, so you have to tell it to get both. Otherwise, it's going to stop at the comma. And we need to turn this regular expression on. First occurrence only is fine. And then for our variables, I'm going to turn off position and change this to tourist income save. And we need to do the same thing we did before with the splitting the text. So by the way, you can copy and paste these things with control C, control V on your keyboard. Um, it's marginally faster. I don't know, because you still have to update everything when you change it, but I'm just going to fast forward through this next part. Okay, so we've got all our text. We're going to send it to Excel now the same way. I'm just going to copy and paste our step here and replace the values. All right, so let's try running this. And it looks like I split on the wrong thing here. So this is looking for RSS hyphen ID, not space ID. So that's why I failed. So make sure your text matches exactly. And let's rerun this. All right, so that got our values correct. Let's go ahead and remove this break step here by clicking on it. And then I'm going to do a focus window so you can actually see this running. Let's stop and then do this. So just as an aside, the other thing that is useful here is maximizing the window. So this is more for when you're interacting with parts of Excel, like clicking through menu options. The menu structure changes depending on the size of your screen. So you always want to have it maximized so that the buttons are in the same place every time. So there's another action for that. So I'm going to focus it by window instance handle and select our Excel instance, save, run it again. So that should bring it to the front. So you can see it's pretty fast. The thing that'll make it even faster is running it without the editor open, because when the editor is open, it seems to take more time to visually go through the steps versus running it from the launcher menu. So the last thing we need to do is save and close our Excel file in our flow. So let's do that. So we have two options here. You can either just use the save Excel option or you can close Excel and then save it as you close. Save it down here. All right, so we are done. Make sure to save as you're working on this. I don't think it auto saves the um, the other thing to do with this file when you're done is you could email it. So there's Outlook actions in Power Automate Desktop. You could upload to SharePoint, although that's going to be a premium trigger as far as licensing goes. Anytime you're going from on-premise to cloud, you trigger the licensing fees. So I hope this was useful to you. I'm planning on doing another video on how to do web scraping, so how to get data out of websites in the future. So keep an eye out for that, and I hope you have a great day.